All right, guys, so I have been baking all morning. I've been making cookies and muffins. I'll show you the cookies that I made, but we're gonna take a break here and talk about boredom eating today because that's a topic that comes up a lot. You guys ask me about that. How do I know what I'm eating when I'm bored? And I thought about, it's like today's a perfect example because I'm gonna be surrounded at my desk by all of the things that I'm making. So let's go ahead and talk about that, how to stop eating when you're bored. And I'm gonna first show you what I made. My muffins are in the oven, so we'll get to those in a hot sack but look at these cookies all right guys these are the cookies so these are just some peanut butter cookies that i'm making so for these these ones are cooked for i always test a couple things this is for eight minutes these ones are for nine minutes these are just a different one that i wanted to try but i really like a chewier cookie so i think i'm gonna i usually like the shorter time so the eight minute but we'll test those after and then i have some muffins in the oven that hopefully when we get done chatting these will be done okay take my apron off so proud of myself when i actually wear an apron when i bake or cook makes me feel like a real adult you know okay so first of all why do we eat when we're bored it's important to note that boredom eating is actually a form of emotional eating okay so a lot of times when we feel something that we don't want to feel we'll turn to food as a way to give us you know a little bit of relief from that as humans we don't want to feel pain or discomfort and boredom really isn't a great feeling right so it's normal for us to think okay what can I do to not feel this way to feel better food is a lot of times it's enjoyable right it kind of allows us to get away from that negative feeling now it's also important to understand I talked about this in my video all on emotional eating but emotional eating is a spectrum and it's not always a bad thing so here's the deal on one end of the spectrum we have just enjoyment okay we're eating food because it tastes good we you know enjoy it it gives us a little bit of a pick-me-up but then as we move along the spectrum we start to use it as distraction or sedation or punishment and that's where it can kind of get tricky when you're using it as your sole coping mechanism you again are trying to really, really avoid what you're feeling and just turn to food as a way to fix that. So perfect example here is if you're having a crummy day and you just kind of need like a mood boost, it's one thing to be like, okay, I'm gonna have this brownie. It's gonna give me a little pick me up, give me, you know, a little bit of joy or I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some cookies or something. That's different than if you turn to the brownies and be like, oh, I just need to forget about my bad day. I just want this to fix it. And you put that pressure to fix your emotions or your mood on the brownies because that's not gonna happen. It's okay to use food as a pick me up, but we can't expect it to fix our emotions, right? Food should be emotional, right? Food, it has nostalgia. It can serve as that pick me up. It can bring you joy and it should. I actually saw some people sent me a video on Instagram. Some guy was like, you can't have a relationship with food. Food is just nourishment. Like, I think that sucks. If you can't find joy in food and you don't enjoy it and it doesn't have that emotional attachment, like personally, like that would suck because food is meant to be enjoyed. It's so much more than just nutrients. But it's really important, like I said, to note that that emotional eating is a spectrum. Now, boredom eating or emotional eating in general can become kind of a problem when you are using it as your sole coping mechanism. When you're bored, you always turn to food, okay? So when you are feeling anxious or stressed, food is the way that you cope with that. It's important to develop other coping mechanisms and we'll talk about that, how to go about doing that. I'm gonna give you guys really four actionable steps to take to really understand how to stop boredom eating and stop eating when you're bored, but it's really important to develop other coping mechanisms because you're not feeling your feelings that's not healthy and you're also probably not eating in a way necessarily that makes you feel great mentally or physically so it's important like I said have those other mechanisms okay so now let's get to those four tips for how to stop eating when you're bored tip number one is to actually get clear on your emotions actually start to feel them and this can be really hard because a lot of times like I said we don't want to feel negative things and we it's easier to kind of sweep them under the rug rather than sit with I'm feeling bored right now because that can cause us stress and anxiety, discomfort, all of those things, it's easier for us to just say, okay, boredom, okay, I'm gonna find something, you know, to make me not feel that emotion. And it can really take time to start to be able to feel your emotions, but it's so important in the process. And one thing I really recommend, you guys hear me say this all the time, is journaling. It is so, so great just to be able to start to think through those things because you might be just feeling this discomfort and not know, is it stress, is it anxiety, is it boredom, if you're not used to feeling your feelings. Food is so much more than just like what you eat, what you don't eat. It ties to all these things, to emotions, to our lives, so many different 
different things. It's this complex relationship. So yeah, I talk about a lot of things like journaling and feeling your feelings because it does tie back to food. You have to be able to sit with that and process it. Like I said, journaling's great. I really felt like my ability to feel my feelings really heightened when I started meditating. I started a meditation practice probably, oh, about almost a year ago now, and it's been absolutely transformative. And I would highly recommend it. I can put some resources in the description of this for you, but it's so huge. And just being able to sit with that and being like, okay, I'm feeling this way. Why am I feeling this way? What was the cause of it? You know, what are some things that can help me work through this? Feeling your feelings is key. Tip number two is to evaluate your hunger. So if you are, you know, just running to the pantry for the Cheez-Its or whatever it might be, grabbing cookie after cookie that's sitting on the counter, ask yourself, okay, am I actually hungry? And ask yourself what your body needs. Sometimes you will be like, yeah, I am hungry. So then you evaluate, okay, what does my body need? Does it need a meal? Does it need, it's looking for just that taste? Really just ask yourself, what am I needing right now? If you're hungry, eat, right? But if you're coming from a place of you're like, oh, I'm not actually hungry, maybe I'm a little full. You know, ask yourself, would having this cookie, having these Cheez-Its, whatever, would that make me feel good? Would that make me not feel good? You know, ask yourself that, check in with your hunger level. It's also really important to take note of practical hunger. And what I mean by this, we talk about this a lot in the society, food freedom and intuitive eating is so much more than just eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're full. It's a lot more nuanced and practical hunger is something that's really important. And basically that's just saying, has my body had a meal, you know, in the past few hours? Is this something that my body is needing, whether I'm necessarily feeling those hunger cues or not? So sometimes this might happen around lunchtime. If I'm having like, I'm zoned into work all day, I'm, you know, really getting into things, I might not necessarily feel my hunger cues, but stopping to think, okay, you know, let me be practical here. Have I had anything since breakfast? You know, maybe my body could use some nutrition, some energy to fuel me through the rest of the day. And doing that, using that practical hunger can really help you to get to the afternoon when you're like, oh my gosh, I'm like so hungry right now. I'm just like grazing all the Cheez-Its. I'm grazing all the cookies. I'm talking about Cheez-Its and cookies a lot, but just example that I have in my house right now, and then after that, you're like, oh man, that didn't feel super great. You know, allowing ourselves to use that practical hunger, using our brain. When people say listening to your body, guys, your brain is part of your body. I think a lot of people forget about that, but that's a really, really important topic is to use that practical hunger. And then a quick note on cravings here is that if you're having a specific craving, like maybe let's use a cookie example again, cause they're literally staring at them on the other side of the camera is to ask yourself, okay, you know, I really want that peanut butter cookie. If you have that specific craving, go for it. Eat it, enjoy it. Yes, still take note of your hunger and fullness and say, you know, I'm not feeling super hungry. Let me just, you know, see how much of this cookie or how much of this plate of cookies I need to truly you know, feel satisfied from this while still feeling physically comfortable. So if you have that specific thing in mind, but you're like, well, yeah, well, I'm not actually physically hungry. That's okay. Because we know that what we avoid eating and what we restrict or say we can't have, we're going to want more. It's like telling a kid to, I can't press the red button. All they're going to want to do is press the red button. Same thing with telling yourself you can't have, especially something that you're craving. You're more likely to overeat it later. So just have it. Definitely stay mindful, stay present, keep an eye on, okay, you know, is this satisfying me? Am I feeling comfortable? All of those things. Okay, tip number three is to create a boredom eating toolkit. And we have a whole worksheet on this in the society, but basically what you want to do here is you want to create a list. I'll walk you through how to do it. So you can use this for any sort of emotional eating too, but we'll do it for the instance for eating when you're bored. So what I want you to do is make a list of three to five things that you can do when you're feeling bored. Okay. So it could be, you know, an adult coloring book. It could be knitting. I knit. It could be, you know, anything playing with a dog. It could be going for a walk, reading, just create a list of things for you to do when you feel that boredom. You're gonna to wanna to keep this list handy. So either screenshot it, keep it as a photo in your phone. You can put it in your notes app, bookmark it if it's in your journal, just have it readily available because I find it very difficult when you're like, oh, I'm so bored, I don't know what to do. That can actually cause you a lot more stress trying to find something versus saying, oh, well, let me go to my list and pick something. So what you wanna do with this list is first, again, you wanna evaluate your hunger. So if you're like, I'm kind of full actually, so I don't think I, I don't have a specific craving. I don't feel like I'm, I'm wanting the food, then maybe you're like, okay, maybe I'm just bored. So let me go to my list and let me try, you know, to entertain myself for a little bit. The key here, guys, I don't want this to come across as you're like avoiding eating. That's not it at all. You're simply, again, assessing your emotion and asking what can I do to handle that emotion? So if 
you're, again, you're not hungry, you're not having a craving, you don't really want the food, maybe you're a little full, do one of those things, maybe give it like five to 10 minutes. Now, don't get super like strict with how long you do this for, just give yourself some time to do it and then reassess. Do I still want that food? Do I still want to snack in general? And if the answer is yes, allow yourself to eat that. Cause again, we don't want to avoid it or create a rule around this, but we do want to be able to kind of process those emotions and allow ourselves to ask, what am I truly wanting right now? So we do this, like I said, in the society for all emotions. So if you have, you know, stress, anxiety, you can create lists for each of those things and use that same pattern that we just talked about to be able to evaluate them. And tip number four, kind of a bonus tip here is give yourself grace, you guys. If you find that you're like, oh my gosh, like I, I just did just go for the Cheez-Its. I didn't even try to use my toolkit or anything like that. That's okay, you guys. Don't beat yourself up about it. What is that gonna do? What I want you to do is take a deep breath, <gasps> do it with me now and tell yourself, okay, that's okay. I truly believe, I say this again and again, nothing is bad, everything is a learning experience. So you wanna make sure that you take time to learn from that. Maybe you ask yourself, okay, so I, I feel like I was bored and I ate the cheeses and now I'm just feeling so full. I want you to sit with that. And again, this is really hard. And I truly do believe that this is one of the huge reasons that people feel like intuitive eating doesn't work is because people don't take the time to reflect. Because again, we don't, as humans, want to feel those negative emotions. So take time and sit with it. We have to do this. Intuitive eating, food freedom is about so much more than just eating the food. Sit with it and ask yourself, don't ruminate, obviously, but just sit with it and ask yourself, okay, you know, did this feel good? Did this not? Because that is key to learning. Now you know what that feels like. So if next time comes around and you feel like you are bored, ah, oh, I have that little nugget of wisdom in my pocket that says last time, oh, muffins are done. Okay, muffins are done. They're cooling. We'll get to those in a second. I'm almost done. So what was I saying? Regroup calling. So like I was saying, you wanna make sure that you are learning from everything and you're allowing yourself to have those nuggets of wisdom of things that did feel good, things that didn't feel good. It's unrealistic to expect ourselves to be like, okay, I watched this YouTube video Colleen put out and now I'm never gonna boredom eat again. It's totally not gonna happen. And that's not the goal, right? Because, you know, it's okay to have a cookie if you're like, I just need a little pick me up, I'm feeling bored, that's okay. And something you can do, again, turn to your journal. And I find that writing things down really helps you process Process things and like file that knowledge. So a couple things you could write about was, you know, how did that make me feel? You know, what was I feeling in the moment? What could have helped me next time? You know, what would I do differently the next time I feel that feeling? And like I said, guys, never boredom eating again is not the goal here because it's unrealistic. You're setting yourself up for failure. It's true. So I hope this was really helpful giving you those four actionable steps to take, creating that boredom eating toolkit. And it just really allows you to be able to process those feelings because I feel like that's one of the biggest thing and make sure the guys that you check in with your hunger. A lot of times you might be hungry and bored at the same time and you need food. And that's okay. That doesn't necessarily mean you're bored of eating. So again, I hope that was helpful. Let's look at these muffins. The smell is like wafting, 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 whatever over here. And I have to show you them. So if you like this video, be sure to give this a thumbs up, hit subscribe to the channel down there, hit the little bell to be notified as well when a new video is uploaded every single week. And let's see some muffins. Okay, so ooh, these are still very warm, so they definitely need time to cool, but these are banana carrot muffins. Hello, baby. I love these um, reusable molds. I can link them in the description. They are like the best things ever. So now guys, let's try one of these cookies too. So this is the eight minutes here. Oh yeah, baby. One quick thing before I leave you, it is before 10 o'clock right now and it's totally acceptable to eat a cookie. So with that, I'll see you later guys.